St. Mark's Square, Rialto Bridge. Welcome to Venice. Colourful architecture and only a few people around. The Italian Lagoon City looks fantastic on Instagram, but how is it in reality? Time to find out. A heads up, Venice is always full of visitors. It's unlikely you'll ever have anything entirely to yourself. Even so, Venice offers lots of pomp and splendor. Venice was once a great maritime power, and it shows. St. Mark's Square is one of the most famous squares in the world, and a popular photo motif. But you'll be sharing it with many others busily snapping pictures. Not even this construction site can tarnish the square's great beauty. But you'll need to be patient if you want to visit any of the buildings. Long lines in front of the Doge's Palace and St. Mark's Basilica are common. How about another must-see site on St. Mark's Square? Like Café Florian, for example. It's over 300 years old. Expect lots of visitors here too. Though with a little luck, you might find a seat. Besides, the odds of running into a real Venetian are high, if not among the guests, then at least among the employees. Mauro Varagnolo was born in Venice and has worked at Café Florian for 20 years. How does it feel to work where others go on vacation? Già dal primo giorno ti fanno ti senti come a casa, no? Quindi lavori volentieri, però comunque è sempre un posto di lusso, è una vetrina non solo di Venezia ma nel mondo e quindi chi passa di qua passa tutto il mondo, quindi tutti ti vedono e, e quindi è solo orgoglio essere qua. Non è... Penso che sia un posto unico in tutto il mondo. Our verdict, Café Florian is worth a visit, although it's not cheap. A cappuccino costs 15 euros. But it's right on St. Mark's Square, which you shouldn't miss during a visit to Venice. Just expect big crowds. Let's visit the second Venice hotspot, the equally famous and much photographed Rialto Bridge. From afar, the bridge looks large and it doesn't seem crowded. But when you're on the bridge, it gets very busy. Why do people put themselves through this? So what's the reason you come to Rialto Bridge? Oh, we actually got here by accident, so yeah. it's my fault. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. You have to see it. It's like uh, an iconic, iconic place to be. Oh wow, it's stunning. It's gorgeous for me. Wow. <laughs> it's like living in a magical place. I wanted to try this experience. When you go get married, a lot of people come here for the honeymoon. Okay? okay. Because it's very romantic. It's a beautiful place. You see, you can see all the canals at the time, the sunset, sunrise. It's a beautiful place. We can't complain anything about this thing. So we like we love to stay here for a while and enjoy the sunset. Our verdict, though the bridge is crowded, the view of the Grand Canal is worth it, especially when the sun sets in the west. And speaking of water, our last hotspot is Burano Island, reachable by water bus across the lagoon. It takes 40 minutes to reach the small island. Burano became famous on Instagram mainly because of its colourful fishermen's cottages. Our first impression is that, yes, each of the small fishermen's houses has really been painted in a different colour. But around lunchtime, it gets really crowded. The elevated narrow bridges are particularly suitable for getting a good view of the cottages. Here too, it's worth taking a look behind the scenes, because many fishermen still live in Burano to this day.
The San Marco Cooperative offers excursions where visitors can discover the lagoon together with fishermen, like Andrea Rossi, watch them fishing or learn about the local nature. There are many small uninhabited islands, which are resting places for migratory birds. La laguna è il cuore proprio della mia anima, io senza la laguna non posso stare perché dopo 40 anni che io faccio il lavoro di pescatore ho l'entusiasmo di andare in laguna come che avessi 10 anni. Per me la laguna ti dà un senso di libertà e è da scoprire e da tutelare soprattutto e voglio far scoprirla anche alla gente che viene da fuori, la bellezza che abbiamo perché non vedere la solita Venezia o le isole così circondate, bisogna scoprire all'interno della laguna. Back to Burano, where we've still got to find out just why all these houses are so colorful. Adesso glielo dico, ci sono due aneddoti. Le case colorate e dai, dicevano perché c'era la nebbia, allora i pescatori di Burano, perché quando andavano a pescare stavano fuori due o tre giorni, quattro anche. Allora per distinguere le abitazioni, Burano, l'isola, hanno dipinto le case di colorate. Però un'altra tradizione dice, quella che io ho sentito anche dai, dai mio nonno, dal mio papà, che non è così, che dicevano perché eh, di, hanno dipinto le case perché i pescatori erano tutti ubriachi, perché aveva, mancava il cibo, però il vino in barca non mancava mai quello. quello è, e quindi questa è la seconda ipotesi. Quale sia quella giusta lo sappiamo bene. Io da quando ero bambino mi hanno sempre detto così. O la nebbia o il vino. There we have it. Whichever explanation is true, the colorful cottages of Burano are definitely eye-catching. Our verdict, Burano is great. The Rialto Bridge and St. Mark's Square are usually very full, but you'll want to visit them anyway. What do you think? Write your opinion in the comments.